Hola, hello, my name is Alejandra Sepulveda and this is Fully Health with Ale. If you are new to this channel, welcome. If you are a, a subscriber already, welcome back. And in this new video, we're going to be talking about the application process for a master's in public health, uh, specifically using the SOFAS application platform. SOFAS is the centralized application service for schools and programs of public health, and it simplifies the application process to applying for public health programs. And you basically start by selecting the programs to which you uh, wish to apply to, and then you submit one application that includes all the necessary materials. So SOFAS is basically a one stop for all the programs that you wish to apply. This video will be structured in three different categories. So what to do before, during and after applying to an MPH program. Let's get started. What to do before applying an MPH program. If you have the opportunity, I would say, and I would highly recommend to apply as early as possible. And with that being said, give yourself enough time to collect all the documents and materials that you will need to apply for the programs. Second, I would start creating a list of all the programs and schools that you're interested. Along those lines, I would also consider any concentrations that you might be interested, such as epidemiology, community health, environmental health, biostatistics, health informatics, and others. You don't have to know precisely what you would like to study and what concentration you would like in the program, but at least having an interest in career goals will help you narrow down which concentration you might like to pursue in the future. And if you don't have a specific interest, it's completely okay to choose a general MPH program. Based on that list, consider the application requirements such as the GRE, transcripts, um, personal statements, resume, letters of recommendations, and any other documents that you might need to apply. Along those lines, I want to mention that the personal statement takes a long time to get done and have a perfect personal statement. So this is just because you have to compose it, review it, review it again, edit it, and so on. So while you are looking at the programs and the schools and the concentrations, take a look at the prompt that you are given to compose your personal statement. The other thing I would highly recommend, because this was very useful to me, and although the process was still long, it really helped me in composing a very nice personal statement. It was to use the writing center or student center, student research center, um, whichever the name is in your school to get help writing your personal statement, to get a review and so on. After you get a personal statement draft, ask friends, professors, faculty, and anybody that would like to take a look at your statement and give you feedback because different sets of eyes will most likely help you to perfect your personal statement. Before you apply to the MPH programs, think of who you would like to write you letters of recommendation. So keep in mind that these individuals that you might ask for the letters of recommendations are those that speak highly of you when really know your academic or job performance or both. And I would highly recommend that you pay attention to what requirements are in the letters of recommendations. So for example, at Indiana University to the program that I applied, they ask for three letters of recommendations and I believe they had to be from a combination of faculty and employers. I know that in other schools they have something similar or maybe the school that you are applying to, the programs that your interests have other requirements, but definitely take a look at that and apply those requirements to who you are asking for those letters of recommendation. The other thing is that I will ask you to let those recommenders know that they will be receiving an email from SOFAS to submit the letter of recommendation and that most likely they will have to do the same thing for the internal application of the program if you have one. Along those lines, 
uh, the process for the letters of recommendations. So first we'll ask you for the name, the email, um, so basically the contact information of the recommender and they will receive an email to submit the letter. This means that, and this is a tip and advice, give enough time to the recommenders to compose a letter of recommendation as well as to have time to submit it. And so this will actually be um, a timeline that you will have to set for yourself. So give yourself enough time from where you are asking the recommenders for the letters and from where the deadline is to apply for the program because you wouldn't want to ask the recommenders for a letter of recommendation just with three weeks um, before the deadline of submitting your applications. I would say ask as early as possible if you are in constant contact with your recommenders, definitely let them know, send them an email or send them a text, whatever is your medium of communication so that they're aware that you're going to be sending in that email or that they will be receiving that email from SOFAS and the internal application to submit those letters of recommendation. The earlier you do it, the best. And along that email that you're sending, your recommenders letting them know that you will like them to write you a letter of recommendation because remember you're asking for one. Um, I would definitely include my resume as well as what are the requirements or um, what the program would like to see in that letter of recommendation. What to do while you're applying. So once you open SOFAS, first of all, you have to create an account and then you will encounter four core um, sections. So you will find the personal information, the academic history, the supporting materials and the program materials. You can always enter information, save it, and come back later to it to finish it up. So the personal information section is obviously all your personal info, such as contact info, biographic information, as well as citizenship information. The academic history section is lengthy. This is where you're going to enter your high school information, colleges attended, transcript entry. This took forever for me. I mean, not like two days, but like a couple of, I would say like two hours, just because you have to literally take in all the courses that you have taken and input them into the platform. Meaning you input the course code, you will enter the course name and the grade that you got in that course. They have a specific instructions in the case that you had to repeat a course or you, whatever the condition is, whatever your situation is, they have instructions for that. I have to say that while I was doing the transcript in entry, I found out that they have a service that does the input entry thing for you. And obviously you have to pay, so there's an option if you don't have the time to do so, they can always help you with that, you just have to pay. And also within academic history section, you will enter the test scores, such as MCAT, GRE, TOEFL exam, if you're an international student, for example. Then we have the supporting materials. Then um, here you will upload the different personal statements. If you're applying to different schools, do not submit the exact same personal statement. Do not, that's it, do not. <laughs> you will also enter experiences such as volunteer work, leadership, um, work experience, it's, and more and then achievements and licenses and certifications that you may have and lastly the program material section is where you will submit a specific documents of your program so when you add the programs that you are um, applying for in SOFAS you will see the program materials section and there you will see if you need a resume or any other document that is just very specific to that program per se. What to do after you have submitted your applications in SOFA. First, be attentive of your email, pay attention to your email. They will send you email notifications of every step, any recommendations letters that were sent in when they received your transcripts, um, when they have processed your application and so on. And you can also log into the account, but definitely put in an email that you're constantly checking. Second, 
fill out the program's internal application if there's any. So I apply to three programs listed here. Second, fill out the program's internal application, which may ask you for the similar, um, the same documents that you submitted for SOFAs. The three programs that I applied had internal applications and two out of the three of them had inter internal application fees. So keep in mind all the fees and the money that you're gonna spend just in applying for those programs. I would say that this is not really after, but depending on when you're applying, definitely fill out FAFSA. Um, if you are applying for funding, if you would like to receive any loans, if you are um, looking out for funding opportunities, whether that is scholarship, assistantships, and so on, and even to receive or be considered for any loans, they will most likely ask you to apply for FAFSA and submit it on time. And while you're doing that, remember to enter the school codes of the programs that you are applying to. Keep a look at any emails from the school that you're applying to. They will most likely reach out to you for any documentation that you're missing or anything else that they will like from you. And I can't wait to hear where you decide to go. I mean, definitely wait for those acceptance letters to come in and make your final decision. So we have come to the end of this video. I hope that you have found some guidance and light into the navigation of the application process for a master's in public health. I know it can get complicated, lengthy, and frustrating all at the same time, but my number one tip is for you to give yourself enough time to do the whole process and to have enough time at the end to make a great decision for yourself that, you know, hopefully will end up in hopefully will end for you to have the best experience at the program that you choose. My number number one tip will actually be for you to ask all the questions. I mean, absolutely ask all the questions, email, call, whoever you have to before, during, and while you're applying and after you have applied, ask all the questions you need regarding the program or any doubts that you might have um, because I'm pretty sure whatever you're asking is important for you to make the best decision for yourself. And yeah, well, I hope you have enjoyed this video and I will see you on the next one. Let me know what your thoughts are on the application process if you have gone through it. And if you are going through the application process, feel free to put your comment below if you need any help or if you have any doubts. Comment below as well if you would like to see some type of a specific content or videos regarding my experience as a future MPH student and like and subscribe and obviously share with someone who's going through this process or is considering to go into public health. Thank you. See you in the next one. Bye.